First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Gainesville spring election delivered low turnout, but some pretty big surprises. It's Wednesday, March 15th. I'm Evan Moon. And I'm Kelly Grossfield. Thanks for joining us. One incumbent lost, another narrowly won, and the three-way race will not need a runoff. Austin Landis joins us now with more on that District 2 contest. Well, Thank you, Austin. A bit of history was made last night in the District 3 race with 26-year-old David Areola winning that seat on the Gainesville City Commission. He will be the first Mexican-American to serve, and he'll take office as the youngest person on the commission. Areola took two-thirds of the vote in District 3, an area near Butler Plaza with a heavy population of college students. He says his first priority is to look at the way the city handles development. A big issue about growth management, uh, and so I'm going to be uh, taking a good hard look about how Gainesville is going to continue growing and, and how we can really, you know, fulfill what I think is our is our destiny to, to continue to be uh, a great university town. Ariola says he is humbled by his win and excited to get started. The low turnout in District 3 may have made the incumbent more vulnerable. More than 400 district residents who voted three years ago skipped the spring election this time. And Craig Carter finished with 800 fewer votes than in 2014. He offered some advice to the winner on trying to do right by both the district and the entire city. Oh, he's going to have to open his ears. Uh, you represent everybody in the city of Gainesville, no matter what their age or color or skin. So you're going to have to sit down with everybody. Uh, you can't alienate an entire group of people you know, because of their political beliefs. Carter gave an emotional concession speech to the watch party. After thanking his wife and volunteers, he specifically thanked Solomon Luan, a Chinese national who went door to door throughout the campaign. Carter's term is not over just yet, so in the remaining weeks, he plans to focus on committees he's involved with. In the only citywide race on the ballot, Helen Warren held on to her at-large seat. Warren and her supporters anxiously waited for results last night at her watch party. They were able to eat, drink, and play games like Jenga to pass the time. Her race was the last to become clear because it required results from all 35 precincts and all vote-by-mail ballots. The crowd cheered when the final precincts came in, and Warren still had a 940 vote margin. Okay, so I won, but it was close. And that's what I had anticipated with the, the mood of politics across the nation. You don't ever anticipate that it's an easy win. Warren said her opponent, Jen Powell, ran a great campaign and Warren admires Powell's effort to get involved in local politics. Powell told us she feels great finishing so strong with 45 percent of the vote. Breaking news out of Ocala, the sentence for a former president of the Gainesville Police Union. Jeffrey McAdams was accused of stealing union funds and in January changed his plea to no contest. This afternoon, a judge sentenced him to three years in prison, followed by 10 years of probation. So it's definitely much cooler today than it has been the past couple of days. And WUFT's Brian Bogiano told us earlier that it's supposed to be even cooler tomorrow morning. He joins us now from the Weather Center with more. Yes, in fact, it's so cold. It'll be so cold tomorrow morning. Thanks, Brian. Stay warm, everyone. Record low temperatures are expected to hit Gainesville tonight. And as Gainesville experiences freezing temperatures, local strawberry farmers are taking action to keep their crops safe. Elizabeth Del Carmen joins us now with how one farm is handling the cold during this peak strawberry season. Take off all the tarps until Saturday, but if the weather is warm enough on Friday, he'll open one strip of strawberries then. Thank you, Elizabeth. Gainesville lost a local legend when Perry McGriff died last month, but his legacy will continue through blood donations. LifeSouth Community Blood Centers are keeping the memory of McGriff alive by having an account open in his name that can be donated to at any time. Last week, LifeSouth hosted a blood drive to reach 536 pints of blood. That's the incredible total the former mayor had donated in his lifetime. We had a fantastic response from the entire community, um, not just Life South says many businesses have scheduled blood donations in McGriff's name throughout the end of the month. The 536 Pines goal was reached on Sunday, but Life South will continue to collect blood donations through the Pines for Perry account. On top of being mayor, McGriff was an Alachua County Commissioner, Florida House Representative, and an All-American football player for the Florida Gators. WFT News First of Five is just getting started. Coming the Gators will open up SEC play this weekend with a three-game series at Auburn starting Friday. Thank you, Alexis. Before we go, one last check on the weather. We have start off spring in the upper 70s. Back to you.
Thanks, Brian. BBC World News is up next, and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7 o'clock. WFT News returns tomorrow at 5, but your Florida news is always on at WFT.org. Have a great night.